What's up? We're gonna get right to it today. Lifespan, health span, longevity, intro. Three, two, one, go. Guys, what is happening? Kevin from liftandbalance.com here. Welcome to this wonderful, wonderful, wonderful spring day. I hope it's as nice where you are as it is right here. So what I wanna talk about today is that notion of longevity and how it fits into our overarching plan of life. See, most people focus on the statistic around lifespan, the average duration of how long the population is expected to live. In the Western world today, it's in the high 70s, I believe, which isn't that bad. Longevity. What it basically is, is the byproduct of both your lifespan and something called health span. Now, health span is a key factor here because it's the years that you are actually healthy, the years that you are not dealing with any form of disease or something we call morbidity. It's the years that you can actually live your life and do what you want to do. You're not restricted to a house. You're not restricted to a wheelchair, to a cane, to not traveling. It is the years, like I said before, that you are truly healthy. So the concept around longevity is to take those peak years of health span and push it out to the later years in life. So you are still at a top level health span in your 70s or in your 80s and you really don't see a decline or a downward slope until you really hit the last year or two of life. Now this really isn't the case for many and I'm sure you've experienced it with loved ones and friends and family where you see the onset of disease around 50 or 60 years old and it really just is a sad downturn in their health, in what they're able to do, whether it's being stuck in the home, whether it's walking around with oxygen, whether it's relying on medication, um, and not being allowed to do what they truly love. That's what the concept of longevity is really around helping prevent. So what I wanna talk about today is how we get that health span curve and push it out like we showed before. And the good news is it is the perfect time to start right now where you are, whether you're 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, focusing on longevity and how you can push your health span out is something you can do today. So how do we improve our longevity? How do we live longer and healthier? Three main ways, well, four, but we're not, we're not gonna focus on any exogenous molecules or medications that you can take. There are some that come with some complications, but we're sticking with the three core ways. Sleep, food, sweat. I hope you weren't waiting for like a map to the Fountain of Youth or something. Just like in so many other core things to health, these three pillars are so important. And the earlier that you invest and start paying attention to them, the better chance that you will live a healthier, more prosperous life. It's as simple as that. So sleep, just finished a video on sleep. You can check it out up here or here, I, I'll get it down the pointing soon, but I'll, I'll link it in the card, the, the picture of the title is below. Sleep is so key. There's a reason it's been around and evolved over billions and billions of years. It does cool things such as brain detoxification, memory consolidation, muscle repair, disease prevention, stress reduction, and some new research is showing it's literally overnight therapy for our emotional stress during the day. So honing in to get your eight hours of sleep is key. Skimping out on sleep, going with six hours or below, has shown some pretty dramatic effects. So I would advise, again, check out that video. You'll be making sure that you get sleep every night. Sleep's important. It's been around for so long. Get it. Number two, what you eat and when you eat. Back thousands of years ago, our ancestors basically ate whatever they could get their hands on. That's because survival was the number one objective. Unlike today, where dessert is the number one objective. That is, unless it's pumpkin spice latte season. <laughs> Either way, we're seeing that this strategy with the modern day food abundance that there is, isn't the best way to go about things. Factor that in with all the processed and chemically derived foods that are on the shelves of grocery stores, and it kind of clears the picture of why we're in this certain obesity and metabolic syndrome predicament of the 21st century. 
So understanding what is going into your body is literally one of the best investments that you can make. I will link in the description a bunch of different articles that break down some eating strategies, but I will tell you that they primarily focus around eating real whole foods. Simple as that. And then in regarding to the when you eat, I will say this, a lot of the leading scientists in the longevity field practice some sort of time-restricted eating or fasting. Whether that's intermittent fasting, whether that's prolonged fasting, again, there are some videos that you can check out. Um, I will link them in the description below. But research has shown many, many benefits to implementing some sort of fasting protocol. Many will argue that we have not evolved biologically for today's society. With the abundance of processed food and the lack of movement, it's a very, very different life than our ancestors lived. Speaking of movement, number three, sweat. So we have the longevity bases loaded and now we need the cleanup hitter exercise to clear the bases and our body. Getting your movement in or following some sort of exercise regimen has shown many biological benefits, both from a physical perspective and a mental perspective, helping out with things such as muscle growth and muscle maintenance, the elimination of toxins from your body, as well as triggering a cellular cleanup process called autophagy, or even more importantly, mitophagy, which is the cleanup process of your mitochondria. All these help prevent what is the number one thing that leads to morbidity and disease, and that is DNA damage. These protect against it, and all it takes is 2% of your day. 30 minutes a day, get some movement in. It is one of the best investments and a key pillar to health, to longevity, to increasing that health span that you can perform. Oh yeah, and like all those feel-good chemicals that are just bursting around your brain and body after a nice run or circuit or things like that. So come on, get high on your own supply, literally. You can check out some quick hitting 30 minute workouts, whether they be body weight or kettlebell or things like that. Put a card up here, link it below as well. To sum it all up, everybody's metabolically different. There is no all-in-one pill that can make you live to 100, being healthy to the very last seconds. And there's no equation that you can plug all the variables in and get an output of where you stand on the longevity scale. Doesn't exist. Genetics, lifestyle, environment, activity, sleep, and diet are all key components. I've seen, as I'm sure you have, way too many friends and family really dwindle in their last years of life when they're dealing with disease, when they're dealing with morbidity, that really takes a toll on their health span and their quality of life takes a big hit. So I wanna urge you to not take the preconceived expectations for health that you built for yourself into your life for granted. Don't just expect them to happen. Actively live the lifestyle and put in the work to make those expectations or give yourself the best chance of those expectations come to fruition. Some things you can't control, but some things you can. Never been a better time than now.